conspiracy theories are dangerous. Information is the oxygen of a democracy. All lies will be exposed, and we've all got to do our part. So let's talk about Fahim, because Fahim is spicy. Um, and this is the connection that that was dangling out in the lawsuit. Um, this Jones v. Combs lawsuit, it was in there, kind of hanging out. But I don't think anybody had quite put two and two together. I think this is kind of why my reporting kind of blew up on it. Is, and actually, it wasn't me that put the connection together. Um, shout out to you guys. It was people in my comments that are more tuned into this stuff that noticed that this guy in the Diddy lawsuit, Fahim Muhammad, who was like the fixer that you were supposed to, oh, sorry, you can't see my notes because they're not on the stream right now. Boom. This guy, Fahim Muhammad, he was Diddy's fixer. He was the guy that like everyone that worked around Diddy was instructed to call him if they even got pulled over, like if there was any trouble, because of course they were all carrying drugs for Diddy all the time and guns and prostitutes and Lord knows what else. So if they ever had any trouble, they called Fahim and Fahim would fix it. Um, Fahim apparently had uh, connections with the LAPD, connections with Lord knows what. Um, that could make investigations go away in this lawsuit. It's directly alleged that he made a murder go away. Um, that's the aftermath of the murder. The LAPD saw this bathroom where Jones alleges that he directly witnessed, um, did he shoot someone? And uh, the police came, they saw it all, they investigated it all. And did he just told everyone to say it was a drive-by shooting, sweep it under the rug? And the LAPD was like, yep, sounds like a drive-by shooting. And they left. Um, that's not the only time that's ever happened before. So who is Fahim? Well, people in my comments, uh, you legends, put two and two together and realized that Fahim Muhammad was Michael Jackson's head of security. And you don't have to dig very far to realize, I mean, you have to dig a little far because anyone that doesn't have a Wikipedia page is inherently harder to research because they're just far more obscure. There's often multiple people with the same name that you have to kind of sort through. Having a name like Fahim makes it a little easier. But um, doing my research on him, it became quickly apparent that I was able to find a couple sources that crossed to make sure I'm talking about the same Fahim Muhammad, make sure I'm talking about the same guy. He's the guy that has a ton of land and gave his kid a bunch of land on the border of Mexico. Um, he's like in real estate now. But uh, where can we go to this? Where, where can we go to this? Hey, Penn alumni. Right here. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in business administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing. In 2008, in 2009, he was the head of Michael Jackson's security when Michael Jackson died. So that means that a dude, like a 21-year-old dude or whatever, 22-year-old dude, is a little hard to cross-reference how old he is. I had to like backtrack from an article that said he was 30. That means that he's like 22, 23, 24. He just graduated college one year ago. And he is assigned to be the head of Michael Jackson's security detail. And then Michael Jackson is, so Michael Jackson was addicted to painkillers and he was taking, he was addicted to a lot of things, um, probably because of his doctor, who knows. And he was taking this sedative that's like way too, not supposed to be used as a sedative for sleeping, as a sleeping aid. So he was, every night he was going to sleep using this drug to help him sleep. And so they found him dead, overdosed on that drug. Um, and I'm just going to throw it out. So like the blame during the trials all went to his doctor for like prescribing this drug. And like, and so it was like apparently an accidental overdose on this drug. And it was because of the doctor's fault that, but like, bro, when someone's asleep, anyone can come in and like overdose them. Like, I'm just saying, that's just, that's just speculation. I'm not, I'm not making any allegations or any claims. I'm sure Fahim is a great guy, but he was the second person on the scene right after doctor Doctors already in the room, allegedly, apparently giving CPR to Michael Jackson. And then Michael Jackson's kids found his body um, and Fahim helped get the kids out of there. Uh, and then immediately after he so, so thoroughly failed to protect the king of pop, he then is, shall we say, rewarded by being hired by Diddy 
to run Diddy's sexual blackmail operation security. And yes, security for an operation like that, I mean, in order to secure those kinds of places, those kinds of operations, you have to know everything that's going on. You need to know who's coming and going. You need to know what substances are where, what guns are where, what people are where. So Fahim Muhammad being, being the head of Diddy's security means that he was like managing in a big way all of these illegal operations. And his only experience is a business and marketing degree with a specialization in real estate and overseeing the not suspicious death of the king of pop. Not suspicious at all. Just saying. I'm very curious. I mean, I'm curious where Diddy is right now, but I'm also very curious where our boy Fahim is right now because let's be real. He probably knows where more of the bodies are buried than Diddy does. Um, and Diddy knows a lot of things. So that's our boy Fahim. Oh, real quick. This is just a fun tidbit. This, so he, he has all this real estate because he started a real estate company um, as like his side gig. So his, his security company is called Elite Transportation and Security Services. And did I take a screenshot of his, uh, this real estate company, development company? Uh, it's called Oasis. Um, Oasis is a real estate and investment development company that he's trying to like do. Uh, it sounds, I mean, it sounds good. It sounds like he's trying to like get all this real estate and kind of like get it available to minorities and black youth and stuff and kind of like help people out with getting homes. Um, but because he has all this property, he gifted his son for, I think his 15th birthday, like hundreds of acres of land as a portion of this big parcel that he had bought right on, in San Diego County um, on the border of Tijuana. But it's not just in San Diego County. Um, right there. Yes. Boom. So I found in the CBS 8 article that I was reading, they apparently went to visit him on this property to interview him about this. It was like kind of a big story that he was gifting his 15-year-old son all this land. A bunch of news articles picked it up. You can find them yourself if you kind of Google the keywords of what I'm talking about. Or if you see what I've got here in the screenshot. Right here. When CBS 8's Anna Laurel drove out to meet Muhammad and his family in Boulevard, there were boulders, trees, and the U.S.-Mexico border wall. So wherever this land is, it's on the literal border somewhere near to Tijuana. Just throwing it out there. Just thought that was kind of nifty. Information is the oxygen of a democracy. It's so sick that we can't talk about it. It actually lifted up. And it could actually turn. I'm gonna ask you to look away. Legend has it that Christian Rosenkreutz drew his secret knowledge from the wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. They estimated a hundred yards from the left wing was this hundred foot this. You begin to get into this uh, very scary scenario that has to do with the human condition of uh, the proclivity to accumulate vast amounts of power around a handful of people. And right now, these misanthropic sociopaths are running the planet into the ground. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. There's so much evidence out there that even if less than 1% is true, that would be enough to collapse the current paradigm and change the whole planet. Our security is at stake.